recently I've decided to vlog my little visit to Norway, where, which is where I am right now. Uh, we landed last night, uh, way after midnight, we were an hour too late, we should have landed at 11.30, we landed more like 12.30 and it's still dark, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and it's getting bright now. I'd really forgotten just how dark it is this time of year. I remembered it being bright from 9 o'clock onwards, but apparently by 10 it's still pretty, pretty dark. So, yeah, we're gonna have breakfast soon probably, and I'm just sitting here with my little babies. Can you see them? Oh, hey, Cassie. Hey, you little beast. So, yeah, just waking up. What have you got, Ellie? Nothing. Let's move on. What do I see here? Nothing. Is it yarn? We don't need a close-up to there, believe me, because uh, that vlog didn't really happen, did it? I was going to vlog and uh, then New Year's Eve happened and then I got sick, so I'm done with the flu. So, why are you doing out walking, I hear you say? Well, I want to. <laughs> uh, I want to walk my dogs. It's one of those things that I really enjoy when I come back to Norway. Is it? Are we really not focus. Well, you don't want to see my snotty face anyway, so it's fine that like it's blurred. <laughs> so, just walking the dogs. And uh, I actually went downtown today because I figured this would, could possibly be my last chance to buy yarn. Because uh, we all know I really need yarn. Like, my yarn stash is like one skin, right? Right? right. <laughs> I'm not even funny. <laughs> so, yeah, I just thought I'd start restart my vlogging now so we are right on Thursday night night to Friday Friday we were just late at home trying to recover from business Saturday was New Year's Eve Sunday I woke up sick Monday I was even more sick and then today's Tuesday uh, and I feel ready to at least have a camera in front of my face again uh, so yeah I will try filming a bit from this walk because these surroundings you guys Oh, oh, it's good to be here. Look at that little dog. Hello, Cassie. Oh, it's so beautiful and quiet. I love going to this place when I've come back to Norway and been in London for a long time. I just look at how happy my beasts are. Running around, having a little wee in the snow. I'm sorry, Cassie, I didn't bring her down. 
So no surprise that I have bought a bit of yarn given that I'm in, Nor in, 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 Nor in Norway and they sell yarn and it's my favorite yarn in addition to being affordable. Oh, hello, Doug. Uh, so I'm just going to show you what I bought. So this, this is the yarn that I bought on Friday. Got lots of lovely goodies here. I'm sure that's enough. So as you can see, they have expanded their lamb's wool selection markedly. And today I bought these two. Mm, slightly less affordable than the others, but been very excited about them. Hi, Cassie. And also I bought these two huge bags of yarn and I'm ashamed. I am very, very ashamed. But Cassie forgives me. Right, you do, Cassie. Oh, why are you so little? Oh, and this is Ronia. She's inspecting my Friday purchases. This is acceptable, Ronia. Have I done good or bad? Oh, look at your face. It's not focusing because you're so furry. Look at your little face. So here's the damage from today. Aside from, oh, in addition to these needles. We really are focusing issues. So I don't really like double pointed needles, but we're going to have a go at them. Why not try? Okay, so recap. I bought these two Sirlius gains today. And also these sock needles. And these are from Friday. And this, you guys, is also from today. And it's kind of crazy. But the good news is that not all of this is for me. I'll get back to that later. Most of it is for me and I have some yarn swaps I'm doing, etc. But generally, uh, I've gone a bit crazy. So, yeah. Let's just go through what all this is. We've got some three-ply knitting yarn, as it's called. Triatro sticky yarn. And... Uh, some white fino, because I realised you can never have too much white fino. And some black fino and some lamb's wool, because they have expanded their lamb's wool selection. So there's lots of lamb's wool in my hometown, and so of course I only bought white, black and grey, because I'm exciting like that. And some browns, because I need it for my Kate Davis yolk, and a yellow, because I've never eaten it with yellow. Anyway, this is the horror that's on my floor right now of which nothing is in focus, I guess. I can't really tell from here. And here's a little nugget on the floor, because she's so small. We're going on a road trip, because we're going to a cabin in the mountains. And this in my eyes right now is the sun. I'm still sick. But there's a sun in Norway right now, in the beginning of January. Can you believe it? Oh God. <laughs> it's really low, so it's just going straight into my eyes. and. I was just going to say, we're going on a road trip and I'm still kind of trying to vlog my Norway visit. It's evidently not a daily vlog, but I never said it was going to be. <laughs> um, so yeah, Olaf's driving. He's a Hello. Good, good driving beast. It's all snowy outside. And there's some. And now I got all dark. Oh dear. I'm still sick. But this has been planned since summer we've been looking forward to it for ever so we're going anyway and i can be sick there as much as anywhere else i just have to get across the marshes that's going to be covered in snow so i'm going to be walking on snow boots which i've never done before because we usually ski but i don't like skiing i know how to do cross-country skiing but i don't like it so okay well it's i want to show you how snowy it all is just like to point out that this is a regular supermarket and they have addy needles and viking yarn just like next to the potato chips i love this country i love yarn look it's a big mitten it's the biggest type of mittens anyone's ever made because this is the village where they're from and i'm gonna buy yarn in it because i've got one skin <laughs> Look who's excited to see you. 
Right, so we have arrived in the cabin and I have regained the feelings in my toes after walking to the cabin in the deep snow with snow boots. And uh, yeah, we're trying to like heat up the whole place. And by place, I mean like everything here. There's a little beast on the floor there. <laughs> so I'm gonna make some waffles now because it's a bit too early for dinner and I wanted waffles for ideas and yeah, I saw some hair tracks in the snow. That was really nice. Um, before you dried my makeup, this is yesterday's makeup because there's no point in making an effort. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Scandinets. My name is Ellie and this is Cassie. She's my 12 year old dog and we are in Norway. And I will let her down now because she's a bit upset that I'm lifting her up from her daytime slumber. But you can find me on Instagram as Skandir as well and also on Ravelry. And we have a Ravelry group called Skandir Knits. And Cassie isn't active there, but hopefully you will still find it a enjoyable group. So we are in the mountains in Norway right now. It's called Tudarn. I'll just put a map in here or something, if I can be bothered. <laughs> oh god, Cassie. Oh, Cassie. Anyway. So yes, as you can gather, I am on holiday back home in this cabin that I've gone to every winter since I was probably seven. We have a, a little window of sunlight now, which you can't always say. Uh, we didn't have much sun yesterday, uh, and it's not focusing. Hello. Yes. But we have sun today, and it's very nice. Although it's annoying, because it's like super low, so it goes straight into my face. Anyway, um, I have some knitting to talk about today. I was hoping to show Cassie's jumper, but she is not that keen on wearing it, really. Oh yes, I forgot to say welcome back. Uh, welcome back and welcome to new viewers. And kind of like I said last time, this episode is on a different level than the previous one. It's a different location entirely. Everything's different and it's less planned than it normally is. I'm putting in lots of montages of my holiday in Norway and it's just a different kind of episode. So don't feel like this is... If you're not happy with this episode, I can assure you at least it's not reflective of what I usually do. But it might still be good. I don't know. I've got very little planned. Um, but I thought I'd show you something I've knitted. Oh, look at this. Look at this jumper. Look at this dog. Oh, she's not very happy to wear it when I put it on. But when it's cold, which it has been here, it was 15 minus yesterday because it's up in the mountains. She's very happy to wear it when she realizes it keeps her warm. But now we made it very warm and just, yeah, warm in the cabin. So I might just take it off her again. But I just thought I'd show you. So this is something I knitted ages ago and I got two of them. One for each. The other dog's a bit bigger, so she got a bigger one. And it's based on a drops pattern, so it's free. But I made a lot of alterations. I I didn't understand gauge at the time, so I just added more stitches to the round instead of just going up a needle size. I just wish I'd understood that at the time, but it works either way. Um, and they're all right, they've sort of had enough wear to the color work to look nice, even. Um, so, yeah, you can really just find this pattern on Drops' websites and put in whichever chart you like. Because this chart, both of these, I've added, and it's really easy. I wasn't that experience as a knitter at the time when I made these, so I'm sure you could have a go at that as well. If you understand the basics of knitting from a chart, you'll you'll get it. Go ahead, have one. Oh, we have another dog. This is Ronya, and she is much bigger and much younger. And much more intimate, aren't you? Oh, she's a good dog. So we got her after I moved to London, so we're not that close but for some reason she's close to everybody I don't even know if she remembers me from time to time she's just she just loves people so before we get into knitting I just thought maybe just talk about uh, what I've done so far in Norway so we arrived um, about a week ago on Thursday th Thursday night almost like Friday morning the flight was really late and uh, the first day we were kind of lazy but we did go downtown eventually and 
uh, went to two yarn shops and we thought we'd do a one day yarn crawl but eventually we spread them over two days mostly due to me being sick but the first two days I was not sick so the first day we just met my friends played some games second day we had New Year's Eve so we had the traditional <laughs> dinner with my friends and um, my boyfriend's never done this with me before because we didn't know each other last year uh, so I think we enjoyed that both of us until we left about a quarter past midnight just ready to be just the two of us just sitting in my sister's sofa and playing video games and falling asleep and yeah it's very nice and the day after I woke up feeling sick it wasn't awful but enough for me to be like this is worse than a cold uh, but not entirely flu and that's kind of although it's been getting worse and then better it's basically been like that since then and now it's been a week uh, it's Friday and New Year's Eve was on Saturday and I mainly been homesick. We did have one day downtown to buy more yarn because <laughs> I was like, I'm feeling marginally better. So I figured that would be the day that we could get, go downtown and buy more yarn because we might have time to do it on Monday, the day that we leave for London. Uh, but maybe not, so I wasn't going to take any chances, was I? Um, so yeah, we got up on the cabin on Wednesday and it's Friday morning now um, Friday afternoon oh it's almost yeah it's just afternoon and I bought so much yarn you guys <laughs> but we'll get back to that later we can talk about that when I'm back in London and see how much yarn I managed to bring because I was hoping to bring all my Norway stash but that doesn't seem to be possible now we'll see Anyway, it's been freezing here and now it's just 6 minus, but it was 15 minus when we arrived. That was not very nice, but it's getting better, definitely. The really cool thing is when we go here, we have to drive via Sarbu from Trondheim and Sarbu is where the mittens are from, the mittens that I keep raving about episode to episode. I love those mittens and so we went to the yarn shop that they have there as well. So we actually been to, I guess, five yarn shops altogether. Which for me is actually quite low because there are plenty of yarn shops here, but they're just some that I have to skip this time around. Um, so yeah, we filmed that giant mitten. It's the largest cyber mittens that anyone's ever made. Oh, Danya, you so smart. Oh, she's so cuddly. Um, and I actually buy some yarn there as well. It was like after I bought kilos of yarn in Trondheim in the shop there, and then I bought another two skeins. I'll tell you more about the skins later because it's going to be really interesting for those of you watching, I hope and think. Um, but yeah, I was going to say about that shop. Um, so Husfrieden is like a... It's both a craft society and a chain of shops in Norway. And that's where you get the best yarn. I didn't even view them as a yarn shop in my early knitting career. But they do actually have a huge section of yarn in there. It's slightly more expensive than the other yarn shops. But not by much, and it's it will definitely be considered very cheap in just about any other country. So now I'm all about the shop, and they, that's where they have it. my yarn and pet tivering, known as PT, um, and some uh, different shops may have different yarns. I love them, Stock Sunness and Dale, and Viking. Um, but my local Husfrieden does not. They just do their own brands, I think, and they're really good. And they also sorry started selling some of those um, sparso yarns, which is a breed of sheep, sparse sheep, I guess, uh, which is really hard wool. I've never, it's like, it feels almost wet when you hold the skein. It's so dense and <laughs> uh, you just have to feel it. It's a very different kind of wool and I'm not sure what I would use it for but it's certainly hard wearing and durable which is intriguing. I have talked about this jumper before. Sorry, everything is like where my camera's on a stack of books so it's all kind of uh, well anyway. Got this jumper. Let's turn inside out. But it's the jumper that I made for Christmas for my boyfriend. Oh look. Look. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog drinking water over there. You see the mess that we had for breakfast. <laughs> it's just all up in the air. But yeah, it's a jumper. It's called Edidari by Veris Jonsdottir. It's an Icelandic pattern, obviously translated. I think I used the English translation. Uh, I got it from a book that I have, which is here. I can't remember. 
<laughs> it is one of my favorite um, books for jumper patterns. I love Icelandic jumpers, so it's no surprise really. And here we are. So I have mentioned this before, but I feel like every time I do, I explained it very badly. So let's just have a go at this again. When I make jumpers and I'm not sure if they're gonna fit, I do a provisional cast on here. So after the join, I do it about here and this is bottom up so I knit from here to up here just like you would in a jumper that you started from the bottom but I just start here and I do the yoke and bind off and then I can put the yoke on that's all I have and the rest is on the provisional cast on thread a scrap yarn and I can tell I can hold it like down here and be like oh this doesn't go quite down to my armpits I should knit that bit longer before I divide into sleeve and body. And so I kept doing that and I knitted very far actually this time. It's a, you're supposed to just knit to here but this is actually how far I chose to knit. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. I may have just saved that length for the actual body length. I don't know. But it really does fit and it's very comfortable for him I think. So then I just uh, cast on the body and knit that down and I cast on the sleeves and knit that down. Uh, tricky thing is like being able to cast on the couple of stitches that go here. You may have different methods that you prefer. I prefer a provisional cast on methods again. So I use a crochet cast on for this one. So I make a crochet chain of the number of stitches plus a few more uh, that I need for the armpit. And I pick those up in the crochet chain, the number that I need. So the extra chains in the crochet chain is just there for safety. and. I do that for both, so then I have two facing crochet chains here, the armpit, and I unravel both, so I have uh, two times the live stitches that I've cast on, and I kitten stitch them together and weave in the holes of the armpits on each side. And there are some good tutorials for that online. If I remember, I'll include a link for that. Um, so yeah, it's just a very simple but also complicated, but not that time-consuming way. It, you do spend more time on this because I unravel the first couple of rounds after my provisional cast on when I pick that up to knit down again because the gauge is just a bit weird um, sometimes. And I don't want it to show that I've done a join there. Not a join, but like cast on there and picked up stitches there. I like to, that to be invisible. And I really do think it's invisible now show you one more time I'm really really proud of this and I also I went up I think half a needle size for the yoke I used to say that I don't need to go up uh, any needle size for my color work because I've taught myself to have the floats wide enough that it doesn't kind of go in, in the places where the color work is but even so I have noticed it is a bit a bit smaller a bit tighter even though my floats are fine now so I do that and that made it Nice, nice fit of his shoulder. He's wore this like all winter, so since Christmas. So you can see it like it's got, I don't know, uh, his shape, I guess. Um, the only downside to doing this is that I had slightly less of this brown yarn, so there was no left for doing the color work at the bottom hem. So I didn't, I just did this. Uh, that was just enough yarn. I literally spent all um, five beige skeins. I still had enough to do the colour work for the sleeves and actually I forgot to weave in one end which is kind of embarrassing um, but yeah uh, that's all I think I have to say for this jumper we are done with it and it went amazingly quickly that's one of the things I really love about Icelandic jumpers they knit up so so fast um, so yeah it's done and I managed to film it and show it to you yay yeah so I showed you the dog jumpers and I showed you the Olaf jumper, the Iridari jumper, uh, second one I made, uh, some of you might already know this, but I made this jumper this summer and he lost it on the tube and felt very sad about it. So I decided his Christmas present was going to be the exact same jumper. Although, as you can see, I made some improvements for his fit, but yeah, I just did the same jumper again because he liked it and it, people giving compliments all the time for it and that's just really cool. Uh, um, 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 this is the episode of um, apparently because as I said not the most planned out one 
So yeah, showed you that jumper, showed you the dog jumpers that I had made years ago, but I just, they're like three years old now, two or three years, the jumpers I mean, the dogs are older. Uh, so yeah, I just think that's a really cool thing if you have dogs of that size or even bigger, they have different sizes on the Drops website. Have fun with that. If you, Don't just make them for fun though, it's... What are you doing on the sofa? Don't just make them for fun, because... Dogs don't really think jumpers are fun, we do, and I don't like put them on them and think they're adorable, but unless you have a reason for them to wear them, maybe maybe don't wear I just want to say that I don't endorse putting clothes on dogs just because it's cute and funny when they really hate it. But if it's cold, it's like a legit reason. So yes, as you can hear, I still have a cold. I just had this nasal voice for like the better for a week now, so I just got used to that's my voice now. I keep, like, like I think I'm going to name this episode Skadernitz. Mm, I don't know how to spell that. Anyway, so I have a finished object, but I didn't bring it to the cabin. So this is just going to have to be something we'll talk about in the next episode. But it's the Duchess of Devonshire shawl. It is not blocked yet, so that's something that I can do until next time. Uh, both episodes are probably going to be uploaded really close to one another though because there's no Wi-Fi in the cabin, like we hardly have anything. We even didn't have water the first day because we have to go down to the marsh to find a thing there to like open the well, I guess. And we couldn't be bothered because it was so freaking cold we just decided to like melt snow and boil whatever we need to be hot. Um, but the day after Olaf was like, oh yeah, I want to... Uh, go with snow boots and have a little walk. So he went down and opened the water. And luckily it wasn't frozen. The pipes tend to get frozen in this temperature, but it wasn't, so we have water. Um, and yeah, so we have water. We ha have electricity, but we don't have Wi-Fi. We have a TV though, that gets some TV channels. Uh, but we don't watch TV really, so we just... We watch some DVDs in the evenings, but generally you're supposed to like live the simple life here and we certainly do in terms of like uh, going to the toilet we don't really have a toilet it's an outhouse so it's just like a hole in a bench okay. it's a nice like polystyrene seat and it's not too smelly so yeah these episodes will go up late and you will see that because you can't hear me say this before the episode is up but I have a work in progress and I want to talk about that now here we are so I'm working on a pair of mittens, and as you can see here, it's a little beehive. I happen to call this a, a bee cube early on when I met my boyfriend. I was like, oh yeah, bees live in bee cubes, and he's like, they're not cubes, are they? <laughs> and it was just a faulty translation of mine, because apparently Norwegians call them bee cubes, because oh, probably the cubes where they farm bees, and then beehives tend to be called bee cubes as well, for some reason. And so I'm making bee mittens, and let's just talk a bit about this pattern. It's called the Hey Biotch uh, Mittens by Drunk Girl Knits, or Drunk Girl Designs. It's called Drunk Girl Designs, and she's one of the coolest mitten designers on Ravelry. She's got, like, slightly rude patterns, and I just love them. I have made her Honey Badgers Don't Care mittens before. Pictures of the original here, and then I guess eventually the mittens I made because I made a Hufflepuff version of those, so I didn't really use much of the chart. In fact, I changed the chart a lot. I didn't even use like the badger head had to be changed a lot because her she knits her mittens usually for a knit picks palette, which is a very fine fingering yarn, and I just use like normal to heavy fingering weight yarn. Uh, on needle size 3, so I get a gauge of about 30 stitches per 10 centimeters, give or take. And she maybe go for more like 35 per 10 centimeters or 4 inches, if you will. So I changed that a lot when I made those mittens um, to make it fit a smaller stitch count. <sighs> uh, but for these, I'm just knitting them in accordance with the pattern. But with a larger needle size so that I can get a gauge that will lead to a male size mitten. Usually I'm not super keen on just using larger needle sizes to get a different size for like men versus women. But it seems to be working out because I've compared this to another pair of mittens that I made for a friend of mine. And it's the same dimensions. So this should fit. It should be a nice male size mitten. 
So I have the pattern here, and uh, just show you the picture. It's not giving away too much, is it? No. So the thing is, they say B on one hand and Och on the other, and I figured, and I was right, that my boyfriend doesn't want it, and that's a bitch. So uh, we're, I'm just gonna have them say B on both, or maybe something else on the other. Uh, I have some issues with this pattern though. I do love it and I think it's brilliant and super cool, just like her other mitten patterns. But um, I don't like the thumb increase. Like, I am okay with this sort of sore thumb thing, which means that the thumb is coming up from the hand of the mitten like this, instead of coming out from the palm like this. Does that make sense? I do like that. Equally to the thumb coming up from the palm, really. But I don't agree with where the increases are. And had I known, had I just realized this earlier, I don't know why I didn't, I change that. So usually I think the increases for the thumb when you start making an increase for like a thumb coming, thumb coming out here, you do the increases here and here, symmetrically. However, there is a stitch going up here where the increases are on each side instead. And I don't like that. I feel like I'm getting some funny laddering. I'll show you. So, this is where I'm at now. So, it's increasing on each side here rather than going down here. So, I'd like the increases to be on this side, all the way up here instead of along this stitch. It's a very minor detail oriented thing, but I just. I would have done that differently. So, if you were. To make these mittens, that's something I would recommend. It's a very small alteration that you'd have to do. But I would vouch for that, I think. So let's talk a little bit about the yarn I'm using. This is a green for the cuff. I'm hoping to reuse the green a bit more. And maybe do like some double stitch to add more green to what I've already knitted. Because I'm not keen on carrying three strands of yarn, so I'm just not going to. So I might add this later. Um, and this yarn is by Woolen Knits. I'm gonna have some labels in here. This is the Four Ply Classics by Woolenets. Just give you a close up. Um, so, I don't know if you know about Woolenets. They, you can buy this yarn online and they are being sold in a couple of places. But I bought this at the store, so it's in, I think it's an old ham in the UK. And they have their own wool, obviously, and it's a yarn shop. It's this old factory where there's just a yarn shop now and a cafe. And it's the best yarn shop experience I have ever had. It's just so nice. Like, I've never been so happy. <laughs> Not because it was a yarn shop, but because I was there with my boyfriend and it was summer and things were very good after some very stressful weeks. So, mm -hmm. so what can I say about this yarn? Well, it's got 180 meters per 50 gram ball. That's 200 yards, made in England, 100% um, super soft merino wool, machine washable. That's pretty much what I can say, that's interesting. And you will know if you've watched this podcast a while now that I'm not that keen on doing colour work with merino, super wash merino and colour, which is, I'm not, I don't think it's the best idea. So why am I using this? Well, if you were to hold this yarn, you would know that this feels like wool. It doesn't have any of this sort of stickiness or like scratchiness. It's really soft and nice, but it still feels wool. There's no glossiness to this. I don't feel like it will, <laughs> like, I think the color work will come out nice and so far so good. Like usually my issue with color work with this type of yarn is that the stitches don't become, well they become too defined, in fact. They don't stick together and they sort of slip out and do their own thing and they get, tend to grow a lot. And by all means that might happen here but for some reason they seem to stay put. They seem to create this integrated fabric that I want from color work that it seems like it sort of all falls into place. It's very difficult to explain this. You really should just swatch with Superwash Merino and swatch with a sort of Shetland wool to see the difference and you'll know what I mean. 
but this seems to be somewhere in between, if not even closer to a typical Shetland Norwegian wool. So I'm happy to make mittens with these, and I just like the colours. I mean, look at this green. Look at it. It's so nice. So, uh, most of all, it's a colour scheme that I just happened to pick this summer, and turns out it fits this jumper very well. So I just figured, because I have these colours already, I need to knit down my stash and my boyfriend's birthday is coming up. That's just what we're going to have and he needs some mittens, I've decided. So he's going to get mittens with bees because he loves bees. And now what's probably most important of all is that I want to thank Marit who just one day had bought me this pattern on Ravelry. Just one morning I woke up to that message that she bought me that pattern. Just to be nice. So, thank you, Marit. I thanked her before on this podcast for sending me the pattern. But I tried to keep it a secret because my boyfriend sometimes watches this podcast. I didn't want to say which pattern it was. But he's now got me right-handed knitting on bee mittens. So he's like, are you knitting mittens with bees? And given how much he loves bees, there's really no point in keeping it secret. That is also for him. So, Marit bought me bee patterns and bee pattern mittens and I'm now knitting it and I just want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you nobody's ever bought me a pattern on Ravelry before so that's so nice and really made me smile and feel that really nice urge to cast on and I finally have oh, and I am really eager now to cast on the find your fade shawl I really do want to knit that um, because the knit along has started and I am going to take part in it I've not found any other shawl that I want to do with this yarn, so I think it will be that shawl. It's so merino single yarn that they use this brand and others like Hedgehog Fibers and Cantus Blaze and lots of other people. It's not really good for anything but shawls in my opinion. It's just, it's very glossy, slippery, drapey, etc. So. If I'm going to use it for a shawl, I'm going to use them all together. And if I'm going to use them all together, I need a shawl that uses a lot of colours and look really nice. And I have so far not found a shawl that I think is more suitable than a Find Your Fade shawl. And given that there is a cow, a cow right now, I think that would be the best thing. So, very eager to cast it on. If it just so happens to not have cast it on by the time this episode is up, it should be visible from Ravelry, because I update that thing relentlessly then please do recommend other shawls that are nice with multiple colors i have some others in mind as well but i don't know if i will i yeah i could go on and on and i i just feel so much pressure when casting on yarn that's so exclusive that it has to be the perfect project uh that i keep stressing about it and i never actually end up casting it on so i just need to get get started on it just do it uh so I think that's all I have that's knitting related now. I just kind of want to show you the cabin and I'm going to include lots of montage stuff because this is like my Norway special, I think. I'm going to I'm going to be back in London on Monday. So it's, yeah, like I said, it's Friday today. So it's not, I'm not going to have the other, another chance to do a Norway winter podcast episode except for this one, so a little look around shall we so this is our mess of a breakfast table and I made these rolls and We are puzzling, puzzling a moving puzzle, and this is our little <laughs> toilet out there <laughs> behind that door. Oh, look how snowy it is! Oh, I love this place. It's just far away from everything and everyone. It's the coziest living room, and we managed to get super hot in here because of the little fireplace we got going. So yeah, it's 25 degrees inside and six minus outside. Oh, we did get it to 25 degrees and it was 15 minus outside as well, which is like, what, 
40 degree difference. Oh, look at Cassie. Hey, Cassie. Oh, aren't you the cutest little... Oh, you're so pretty. Yeah. And look, I've knitted this. This is one of my early colour work days. It doesn't fit at all. It's one of those times when I was like, yeah, I'm going to knit it looser to make the colour work. Not this one trying to make this one that not fitting the inbox. Still gave it to my mum though, but it's a bit of a disaster. So yeah, I think that's all I have for this episode, uh, apart from all the other extra uh, video clips I'm gonna try to shove in here and there. Uh, it's been lovely doing an episode from this cabin. I hope it wasn't too weird because it's not the usual format, not as well planned. But screw planning is my holiday and I'm sick so I will see you next week and hopefully I'm better and back in business. Bye! So, it's gotten darker now. It's uh, quarter past three so naturally it's gonna get dark. It's really snowy. And uh, Olaf decided to go for a little walk in his snow boots and I'm gonna go check if the dogs have followed him or not because he figured they could use a walk because we, we are entirely snowed in here. There's not really anywhere for the dogs to walk. Uh, we do let them out outside and they can just run wherever they want. Uh, there's literally nobody here. <laughs> but they're so fussy, they just stand and they're like, oh, we don't want to be cold and snowy, we just want to be inside and be snuggly. Uh, so they're not actually getting anything done in terms of what dogs need to do outside. So we're gonna go check and see if they followed him or not. He's just going out for a walk because he likes snow boots apparently. And I think snow boots are more or less like skiing. So I don't like it. <laughs> Let's see if the dogs are here. Oh. Things. Can you see them? Oh, my babies. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh come on. Oh come on then. Oh you cold little beasts. Oh look at you. Look at you in your snowy face. <laughs> you was. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm still coughing, still sick. And my Pepsi doesn't taste very nice, which means I'm really sick because I love my Pepsi. My knitting is entirely fueled by Pepsi Max. That's right, Danya, that's right. <laughs> oh, you weirdo. Yeah, I don't know where it's gone. I took the path behind the cabin yesterday. So that's like, they got there's some tracks over there. That's not where it's gone today. Just thought I'd take you outside to show you what it's like. So, when I said you're snowed in, we're really snowed in. We have to wear skis or snow boots to get anywhere. Hedonia's looking for Olaf. And I'm really cold because I didn't get dressed for this and it's cold. So I'm just wearing these really horribly old boots. I'm tight, thin tights and just hang on. Excuse me. This lovely cardigan that my grandma's knitted for my mum ages ago and it's just so so lovely and just this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like knitting that will last generations. If you want if you use this kind of wool it will be really soft and just keep you warm. <laughs> basically do what you expect knitted garments to do and this is Seedal's Kofta it's from Seedal, southern Norway and I'm wearing ski thermals underneath and I see a little skier down there or a snow boot man can you see that? that's a little man down there I don't know if you can oh he's behind the trees now well that's my Olaf he's out on his snow It is cold, you have to believe me. But I wanted to show you this whole place. It's just the coziest place you could ever go. I know, like, being in the cold doesn't seem like it is, but when you're inside a 25 degree little cabin, it's quite nice. So, <laughs> I don't mind if I go inside. Oh, God. Come on, I 
widzenia. Come on. Czeka. Our hero has returned. <laughs> oh, he's enjoying himself. So nice. Away from stressful London to this little frozen kingdom of ours.